The Osirian, an architectural marvel of ancient Egypt, is located in the heart of Abydus, a city that was once a significant religious and cultural hub of the ancient Egyptian civilization. This enigmatic structure, situated adjacent to the Temple of Seti I, is a complex labyrinth of religious and mythological symbolism, showcasing the advanced architectural skills of the ancient Egyptians. The true purpose of the Osirian remains shrouded in mystery, although many Egyptologists believe it was constructed during the reign of Seti I in the 13th century BCE. However, there are theories that suggest it may predate this period, possibly being much older. The Osirian's unique construction style sets it apart from other ancient Egyptian structures. It is built from colossal blocks of granite, some of which weigh up to 100 tons, a feat that underscores the remarkable engineering prowess of the ancient Egyptians. The temple complex features a series of pillars and chambers that are partially submerged in groundwater, a design element that is believed to symbolize the tomb of the god Osiris. The water is thought to represent the Nile River, while the pillars symbolize the trees that once lined its banks. Certainly, one of the most intriguing mysteries surrounding the Osirian is the anomaly related to the water within the temple complex. The Osirian is built below ground level, and its chambers and passageways are partially submerged in groundwater. This has led to speculation about the purpose of the water and its significance in the temple's design. One theory suggests that the water was used as a symbolic representation of the Nile River, which was believed to be the pathway to the afterlife in ancient Egyptian mythology. The subterranean chambers and passageways may have been designed to resemble the underworld, with the water symbolizing the journey to the afterlife. However, some researchers believe that the water may have served a more practical purpose. They suggest that the Osirian may have been used as a sort of reservoir or water storage system, with the subterranean chambers and passageways serving as a means of collecting and storing water. This theory is supported by the fact that the temple complex is built on a natural spring, which would have provided a reliable source of water. Another theory suggests that the water may have been used for ritual purification purposes. In ancient Egyptian religion, water was believed to have purifying properties, and it was often used in religious ceremonies to cleanse the body and soul. Despite these theories, the true purpose of the water within the Osirian remains a mystery. Some researchers believe that the water may hold clues to the temple's alignment with astronomical phenomena and its use as an energy or healing center. Others suggest that the water may have been used for a purpose that is still unknown to us. The water within the Osirian also presents a practical challenge for researchers and preservationists. The constant presence of water within the temple complex has led to the erosion of some of the stonework, and it has made it difficult to access certain areas of the temple for study and preservation. In recent years, efforts have been made to address this challenge. A drainage system was installed in the temple complex to help control the water level, and a team of divers was brought in to explore the submerged areas of the temple. These efforts have helped to shed new light on the temple's design and construction, and they have provided valuable insights into the mysteries surrounding the Osirian. Another captivating aspect of the Osirian is that some of the granite blocks used in the temple's construction appear to have been cut with a level of precision that would be challenging to achieve even with modern tools. This has led to speculation about the methods used by the ancient Egyptians to construct such intricate structures. Moreover, some of the chambers and passageways within the Osirian align with astronomical phenomena, such as the solstices and equinoxes. This alignment suggests that the builders had an advanced understanding of astronomy, further deepening the mystery surrounding the temple's construction. Adding to the enigma of the Osirian is the presence of a series of unusual carvings and hieroglyphs that are not found in other ancient Egyptian structures. Some of these carvings depict what appear to be futuristic technologies, such as helicopters and tanks. These depictions have led to speculation that the Osirian may have been built with the assistance of extraterrestrial beings. While these theories remain unproven, they contribute to the allure and intrigue of this ancient site. Another theory posits that the Osirian may have served as a funerary complex for the royal family, with the subterranean chambers serving as burial chambers. The temple's unique architectural style and its alignment with astronomical phenomena may have been designed to facilitate the pharaoh's journey to the afterlife. The use of water in the temple complex may also have been symbolic of the underworld and the journey to the afterlife. Despite the numerous theories surrounding the Osirian, 
its true purpose and the mysteries surrounding its construction remain largely unknown. However, this has not deterred visitors from around the world who are captivated by its allure and mystery. In recent years, several restoration projects have been undertaken to preserve the beauty and historical significance of the Osirian. These projects have helped to uncover new details about the temple's construction and history, shedding light on the mysterious anomalies that surround this ancient site. One of the most intriguing discoveries made during these restoration projects is the presence of a series of tunnels and chambers beneath the Osirian. These tunnels and chambers are believed to have been used for religious ceremonies and may have been connected to other nearby temples. Some researchers believe that these tunnels and chambers may hold the key to understanding the true purpose of the Osirian. In conclusion, the Osirian is a mesmerizing and enigmatic ancient structure that continues to captivate the imagination of visitors from around the world. With its unique architectural style, mysterious anomalies, and rich religious and mythological symbolism, the Osirian stands as a testament to the ingenuity and craftsmanship of the ancient Egyptians. Whether you are a history enthusiast, an archaeology buff, or simply a traveler seeking a unique experience, the Osirian is a destination that should not be missed. Its allure and mystery are sure to leave you in awe and wonder. The Baalbek Complex an architectural marvel of ancient times, is nestled in the heart of the Bika Valley in Lebanon, a region that was once a thriving cultural and religious center of the ancient world. This perplexing structure, located next to the Temple of Jupiter, is a maze of religious and mythological symbolism, showcasing the advanced architectural skills of the civilizations that contributed to its construction. The true purpose of the Baalbek complex remains a mystery, although many archaeologists believe it was a sanctuary for various gods and goddesses worshipped in the region. The history of the Baalbek complex is as fascinating as the structure itself. The earliest evidence of human activity at the site dates back to the Bronze Age, around 3000 BCE. However, it was during the Roman period, starting from the 1st century BCE, that the complex took on its current form. The Romans built three grand temples at the site, dedicated to Jupiter, Venus, and Bacchus, respectively. The Temple of Jupiter, in particular, was considered one of the largest religious structures in the Roman Empire. The Baalbek Complex's unique construction style sets it apart from other ancient structures. It is built from massive blocks of stone, some of which weigh up to 1,000 tons, a testament to the remarkable engineering prowess of the ancient civilizations. The Temple Complex features a series of columns and chambers that are a sight to behold. The sheer scale of the structure and the intricacy of the carvings are enough to leave one in awe. One of the most intriguing mysteries surrounding the Baalbek complex is the origin of its massive stone blocks. The quarry from which these stones were supposedly cut is located miles away, and the methods used to transport them remain a subject of debate among archaeologists and historians. Some theories suggest that the stones were moved using a combination of rollers, sledges, and ramps while others propose the use of advanced ancient technologies or even extraterrestrial intervention. Another captivating aspect of the Baalbek complex is the precision with which some of the stone blocks were cut. The stones in the so-called trilithon are perfectly level and fit together with such accuracy that it's nearly impossible to slide a blade of grass between them. This level of precision is a testament to the skill and knowledge of the ancient builders. Despite the numerous theories surrounding the Baalbek complex, its true purpose and the mysteries surrounding its construction remain largely unknown. However, this has not deterred visitors from around the world who are captivated by its allure and mystery. In recent years, several restoration and conservation projects have been undertaken to preserve the beauty and historical significance of the Baalbek complex. One such project was the restoration of the Temple of Bacchus, which was completed in the late 20th century. The temple, which is considered one of the best-preserved Roman temples in the world, was painstakingly restored to its former glory. The restoration project involved the removal of debris, the repair of damaged stonework, and the reinforcement of the temple's foundations. Another restoration project focused on the Great Court, a vast open space surrounded by colonnades that was once the heart of the Baalbek complex. The project involved the excavation and restoration of the court's pavement 
as well as the repair of the colonnades and the restoration of the court's monumental gateway. In addition to these restoration projects, the Baalbek complex has also been the subject of extensive archaeological research. Archaeologists have uncovered a wealth of artifacts and inscriptions at the site, shedding light on the complex's history and the civilizations that contributed to its construction. The Baalbek complex stands as a testament to the ingenuity and craftsmanship of the ancient civilizations. Whether you are a history enthusiast, an archaeology buff, or simply a traveler seeking a unique experience, the Baalbek complex is a destination to see fascinating ancient architecture. The Parthenon, a magnificent structure that stands atop the Acropolis of Athens, is an enduring symbol of ancient Greece and a testament to the grandeur of its civilization. This architectural masterpiece, dedicated to the goddess Athena, embodies the cultural, religious, and artistic values of the ancient Athenians. The Parthenon's history, design, and influence on global architecture make it a fascinating subject of study. The Parthenon's construction began in 447 BC, during the height of the Athenian Empire under the leadership of Pericles. The renowned architects Actinus and Callicrates, along with the sculptor Phidias, were entrusted with the task of creating a temple that would reflect Athens' power and prosperity. The temple was completed in 438 BC, although the decoration of the building continued until 432 BC. This monument served as a treasury for the Delian League, a confederation of Greek city-states, and housed the colossal statue of Athena Perthinos, crafted from gold and ivory by Phidias. Over the centuries, the Parthenon underwent several transformations, serving as a Christian church, an Islamic mosque, and a storage facility for munitions, which led to its partial destruction during the Venetian Siege of Athens in 1687. The Parthenon is a perfect example of the Doric order of Greek architecture, although it incorporates some Ionic elements. The temple's dimensions, proportions, and details reflect the ancient Greeks' understanding of mathematics, geometry, and aesthetics. The building measures 228 by 101 feet and originally had eight columns at each end and 17 along each side, creating a harmonious balance and symmetry. The Parthenon's design showcases several architectural refinements, such as entesis, stylobate, and optical corrections to counteract the visual distortions caused by viewing the structure from a distance or at an angle. These subtle adjustments contribute to the building's overall harmony and balance making it a paragon of classical architecture. The monument was adorned with intricate sculptures that depicted various mythological scenes and historical events. The most notable of these were the pedimental sculptures, which filled the triangular spaces at the temple's two ends. The east pediment depicted the birth of Athena, while the west pediment showed the contest between Athena and Poseidon for the patronage of Athens. The archaeological site also featured a continuous frieze running along the outer walls of the temple's inner chamber, known as the cella. This frieze, which measured 524 feet in length, depicted the Panathenaic procession, a grand religious festival held in honor of Athena. The metopes, rectangular panels located above the frieze, were adorned with relief sculptures portraying various mythological battles. One of the most contentious issues surrounding the Parthenon is the debate over the ownership and display of the Parthenon marbles, also known as the Elgin marbles. These sculptures, which once adorned the Parthenon, were removed from the temple by Thomas Bruce, the seventh Earl of Elgin, between 1801 and 1812. Elgin, a Scottish diplomat and ambassador to the Ottoman Empire, claimed to have obtained permission from the Ottoman authorities to remove the sculptures although the legitimacy of this claim has been widely disputed. The Parthenon marbles were subsequently sold to the British Museum in 1816, where they have been on display ever since. The collection includes 15 of the original 92 metopes, 17 figures from the east and west pediments, and approximately 247 feet of the original frieze. The remaining sculptures are housed in the Acropolis Museum in Athens, which was specifically designed to accommodate and showcase the Parthenon's surviving artifacts. The debate over the repatriation of the Parthenon marbles has been ongoing for decades, with proponents of their return arguing that the sculptures were illegally removed from Greece and should be reunited with the remaining artifacts in Athens. 
The Greek government has repeatedly called for the marble's return, asserting that their presence in the British Museum constitutes a form of cultural appropriation. On the other hand, the British Museum has maintained that its ownership of the Parthenon marbles is legal and that the sculptures are better preserved and more accessible to a global audience in their current location. The museum has also argued that the marbles serve as a testament to the interconnectedness of world cultures and that their display in London contributes to a broader understanding of human history. What are your thoughts about this debate over ownership? Let me know in the comments. The Parthenon Marbles controversy raises complex questions about cultural heritage, ownership, and the ethical responsibilities of museums and institutions. As the debate continues, the Parthenon remains at the center of a global conversation about the preservation and display of ancient artifacts, underscoring the temple's enduring significance and relevance in the modern world. The Parthenon's architectural and artistic innovations have had a profound influence on global architecture, inspiring numerous buildings and monuments throughout history. The neoclassical movement of the 18th and 19th centuries in particular drew heavily from the Parthenon's design principles, resulting in structures such as the United States Capitol, the British Museum, and the Pantheon in Paris. In recent years, efforts have been made to restore and preserve the Parthenon, with the aim of safeguarding this invaluable cultural heritage for future generations. The ongoing restoration project, initiated in 1975, involves the careful dismantling, cleaning, and reconstruction of the temple's damaged elements, as well as the reassembly of scattered sculptures and architectural fragments. The Parthenon, a timeless symbol of ancient Greek civilization, stands as a testament to the artistic, architectural, and cultural achievements of the ancient Athenians. Its enduring influence on global architecture and its historical significance make it an invaluable treasure for humanity. As efforts continue to restore and preserve this magnificent structure, the Parthenon will undoubtedly remain a source of inspiration and wonder for generations to come. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. See you next time.